Now, it's certainly one thing to get an award you know, from any uh, organization or association, whether at home or abroad, but it's another thing to you know, achieve your set objectives uh, as an institute. But aside that, what other projects, can you tell us, uh, has been embarked upon so far? The Golden Award we got from other ways, you know, in Rome, is a very big mark of achievement, four years in existence, and at the end of that four years, we were recognized by an international body that is based in France. And we were selected among 58 companies that they gave this Golden Award. So I'm very, very happy. The management of this, it has actually spurred us. The management of Napton have made, we have presented this to the Honorable Minister. He was so happy. In fact, the trophy is still with him. Like the word you used, one thing is to get the award, and the other thing is to achieve your objectives. This is very true. We cannot achieve our objectives until all what we propose in terms of projects are implemented. We have other projects that are going on right now. Like I spoke to you, the government has destined that by 2020, out of the 40,000 megawatts, 1,000 megawatts should come from renewable. Now, we, in conjunction with the GIZ of Germany, under energy support for, uh, Niger in, in, energy support for Nigeria, we are building a demonstration plant where people will be trained, young Nigerians should be trained on how to manage and operate and even design and choose, choose the right energy source in Kainji. And not only that, we have open letters of LC paid in order to expand the electrical engineering training laboratory we have in Kainji because right now there is nowhere in Nigeria even though some Nigerians have been trained on smart grid, on, on smart grid and SCADA. And let me just state here that there is no way, you know, the federal government can take off CAPEX from NAPTIN, or National Power Training Institute, or even talk of privatizing it. You can only commercialize it because it is still the responsibility of the federal government. First of all, the federal government has taken employment as one of their key factors they are looking at. And for you to achieve it, you still need to train. And it is only here, for now, that you can train the young ones that will work in the power sector, which is number one project for the federal government. Now, I like what you uh, pointed out a while ago, that uh, satisfaction is one thing that uh, you know, the trainees can actually derive you know, within the power sector. Uh, that's talking about the trainees. So still talking about satisfaction. Are you satisfied with the level of you know, training that has been received by the, uh, you know, by the students you know, for the uh, power sector? Have they gotten all the available skill, all the required skill, or do you wish they could have got something a little bit more you know, as they go out? I, I think um, the day they are going to pass out sometime in October, around October 15, you will come and ask them. The enthusiasm is so much. You know, I told you we started with um, 243. Those 243 of it, 37% um, of them sponsored themselves. While 63% of them were sponsored by the state governors. That was the ones that we have right now. But as I'm talking to you, we have very many interests. We have received the application and those who have paid for themselves over 100 or something. Not the ones that the state governors are paying for. Last year, it was only eight states or nine states that participated. But this year, as I'm talking to you, we have gotten up to 14 states. Some of them have asked us to take more than 15, which we allocated. Some of them have even paid more and paid for accommodation for their students. So when you talk of enthusiasm, the Nigerian graduates are very, very enthusiastic to come and acquire this skill. One is that they are sure that they are going to be the toast of the sector when they graduate because we do not have
trained, invest, uh, trained uh, uh, graduates, trained engineers to man the, invest, uh, the, the infrastructure in the power sector. There's no other place any a person who studied electrical engineer, engineering and mechanical engineering will get job satisfaction more than in the power sector. Even in the whole world right now, Nigeria is the fastest growing demand as far as investment in the infrastructure in the, in the power sector is concerned. From 4,500 megawatts to 40,000 for 167 million or 170 million people. Sincerely, is 40,000 megawatts really enough you know, for the nation's power sector drive? You know, we have a population of about 167 million or 170 million. Is it adequate, 40,000 megawatts? It's not enough. No, but you have to start somewhere. You can't just take it at the blow like that. 40,000, in fact, if you get 40,000 megawatts today, it's only going to give us a minimum comfort level. If you give it another one year, we might go back to where we belong, except we are in, you know, continuously investing. For 170 million people, you know at least industries will grow, factories will grow, and none of these things can grow without power. So what will any youth who graduated from university in engineering will be waiting for? You see? So I think they are more enthusiastic more than now than what they were before we started. Still talking about satisfaction, are you satisfied with the level of you know, training that has been received by the, uh, you know, by the students you know, for the uh, power sector? Have they gotten all the available skill, all the required skill, or do you wish they could have got something a little bit more you know, as they go out? Those that have given this one year uh, skill acquisition, I am very, very satisfied that if you put them in any of the equipment, a 13233 KV substation, transmission substation, they are not going to kill themselves or kill the equipment. I am very sure of that. Or even those who are going to work in the power station. Nobody is going to carry out any wrong switching that will burn the turbine. They, at least they have that kind of knowledge. But as far as I'm concerned, that is not the end of it. They have to work. They have to come back to Napton for because this is in modules. What we have given them now is the foundation that will enable them to be deployed and to start work. Now, DJ, as we wrap up on a lighter note, tell me, recently you clocked uh, the age of 60. Uh, how has that been for you? I mean, looking at uh, all what's been happening within the nation's uh, power sector and, of course, within uh, NAPTIM, you know, what are your thoughts? What's your reaction? How do you feel? I, uh, let me tell you that I feel very much satisfied, very, very much, and I thank God. I am so excited. I'm so elated as far as I'm concerned. You know, each day I wake up in the morning, I kneel down and I thank my God that at 60, he has given me the opportunity to contribute my quota for the past 35 years I have, you know, contributing my quota and has used me to midwife this transformation in capacity building. And of course, the, the, the honorable minister, the president has actually actually say, because I'm supposed to step out. I've retired, actually, from the normal civil service, uh, uh, civil service, and been given what I'm doing now is political appointment. So what I am intending to do at 60, as I march on for the next four years, is to make sure that NAPTIN is moved up to the point of awarding a postgraduate degree certificate to all these graduates I'm talking about, which will have started, people coming in next, the people who train them may not go with postgraduate uh, uh, certificate, but those who are coming in October, we are working with NUC and with four other universities that at the end of their program, they are going to get a postgraduate diploma certificate. And by the time we celebrate, whether I'm not going to be there, but by the time we are celebrating 10th anniversary, Napton should be awarding a degree, a postgraduate degree, MSc in power-related courses. 
And for as long as I am at 60, God has given me that strength, has given me that dynamism, not by my own effort, to achieve this. So I'm very happy that I am doing something that is new. And of course, uh, Engineer Ruben Okeke, with that, uh, we have to come to the end of this uh, discussion. We thank you so much for spending time with us. And uh, we wish you well as you continue as the DG of NAPTIM. Thank you once again. Thank, thank you very much, Ayo. Ayo, thank you. Always. Now, NAPTIM plans to embark on the development of a world-class training program which will require many international experts working alongside Nigerian experts as well. For Engineer Okeke, there's a lot of satisfaction, enthusiasm and hope for the nation's parts sector as the Institute continues to produce more young Nigerians who are well trained with all the basic special skills that will help to push the transformation sector to the highest level. Now, however, a challenge has been thrown to the governments to ensure that NAPTIM's efforts are well sustained with more needed support so that the Institute will continue to gain wide recognition from within and, of course, outside the country. Well, that will be all for this week. Do remember to send us your questions, comments, and suggestions to questiontime at channelstv.com, or you can even watch us online via channelstv.com. I'm Ayatunde Balogun. Till next week, it's bye for now. Thank you.